Hey, how is everybody feeling today? I am your host, Eli Hibbett, back at you again with another edition of the Pulling Your Homework Physics Series podcast. And so uh, today, we're going to be doing the old uh, Christmas episode. I was decorating the house for Christmas, and I was wrestling with my Christmas lights, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to do some uh, introduction to series and parallel circuits and, you know, kind of explain to you how your Christmas lights work, especially with the new LED lights, and, you know, dig a little bit into filaments and, you know, how all that stuff works. And, uh, you know, a little uh, little bit of uh, festive, you know, holiday-related physics for you. So I was um, cruising the Internet for a little bit, of an illustration type of information, and I found this awesome, actually it's energy.gov, a government website, which goes through and actually shows you how LEDs work and how your Christmas lights work, and so there are some really cool uh, images that I grabbed uh, over on the blog, pwnyourhw.blogspot.com, and they're, of course, credited to energy.gov, and the, there is a full link over there if you want to check out their little article about series and parallel circuits. So, hmm, well, I do electronics uh, quite frequently, and so, you know, this is a little bit in my field of expertise, and so I was trying to think about where where I would start with how to explain this. So, um, you know, the plug in your wall, where you're going to plug your Christmas lights in, is 110 volts, AC current, and... The way that you can sort of visualize it is, you know, the plug has two prongs, and the one is the hot side, and the one is the neutral or ground side. And so what it does is it creates a potential difference, and the, you know, the current travels through whatever circuit, you know, you've you've created. Uh, and in this case, it's going to be your Christmas lights. And so as, if you just had a plug and one light, right? I mean, that'd be like, you know, the light in your kitchen or something like that. Uh, that's pretty much what happens is, you know, the current just travels through and you have a filament, which is a very thin piece of metal, which when you run current through it, reliably emits photons or light. And so now just think about, you know, if you had a string of Christmas lights with only one light on it, you have that one light. And in the olden days, it also had a filament, a very thin, crappy filament. And then it pretty much emitted white light, and then whatever color uh, bulb was around it made the color of your Christmas light. And they also filled them with a wonderfully toxic gas to help them burn a little brighter. But what happens is you have um, all of your current for the whole darn thing going through each individual filament. So, you know, we have a wire that comes up into your Christmas light, goes up, connects to the filament, the when you put the plug in, the current, the electric current runs through the filament and then comes down through another wire at the end of the filament and then goes to the next light. And so if you have a string of 50 lights, they all kind of, you know, go like that. And that's what's known as a series circuit. All of the um, all of the lights are in series. So we go up to one light and then down and then bring that current to the next light and down like that. And so when your filament burns out... Uh, everything up to that point, your whole strand goes out because what happens is uh, there's you lose your ground, and so you have a potential difference of 110 volts on your first light, and it doesn't go anywhere. So none of your lights go out. That's why you have the famous, you know, one goes out, they all go out kind of, uh, you know, wonderful uh, complaint from every guy ever who's put up Christmas lights. And so you, once you fix that bulb and you complete the circuit again, everything springs back to life. And now we have LED lights, and they work a little different. LED works on what's known as a PN junction, but and it actually creates uh, light in a totally different way. But it's basically the same idea. So when you have... Um, a series circuit, when all of your lights are in series, it's also known as, like, daisy chaining. So you have, you know, let's imagine your Christmas light has an input and an output. So you have in and out, and then go to the next light, in and out. So we go in to the first light, out from the first light, and the out from the first light connects to the in of the second light. And then the out from the second light goes to the in of the third light, and so forth and so on. And that's so everything is in series, is what they call. Now... There is another way of doing it. It's called putting uh, Christmas lights in parallel. Um, 
and so imagine, you know, each kind of what happens is you have a, you have to use a lot more wire. It's a little more expensive. And so what you have is uh, kind of like what you'd call a, a bus. So you have your your positive and your negative. Imagine the prongs on your plug. And though, then you have wires that connect directly to the in and the out of every single uh, light on your strand. And this is obviously uh, a lot more costly and a little bit more difficult to um, engineer. But what would happen is if in a, this is what's known as everything being in parallel because it would kind of look like a ladder. You have your, your plus on the one side of the ladder and your minus on the other side of the ladder. And then each rung of the ladder would be its own Christmas light. So you'd have the in on the one side and the out on the other side. And each light would light up in the exact same way as in series. But in this configuration, if one light burns out, only that light would die out. So that's pretty much the difference between series and parallel circuits. Um, in a series circuit, everything has to be working in order for the, the circuit to work. And in parallel, uh, each thing can kind of function on its own. And if one thing fails, the rest manages to keep going, which is a very, um, very ideal, you know, uh, how would you say, attractive feature of the parallel circuit. But the drawback is that it's more expensive, you use a lot more wire, and uh, so they don't really do this. And so on LED lights, pretty much what I was saying before, I wanted to come back around to this. You know, you have this PN junction that I was mentioning, but what they do is they put these LED lights in series, and so uh, pretty much the same thing happens. If one light goes out, they all go out. And this actually happened to me. So I, I had my string of lights. I had a string of about... I think it was 126 lights or 104 lights. It was a very weird number, but it was definitely more than 100. And I was, um, I kind of wrapped all the lights around my house. And then I had at the very beginning where my plug comes in, I ran an extension cord around to, you know, start it off. And I had a couple of lights just kind of dangling in the grass. And I didn't want to show those, I guess. You know, you don't want to just see them hanging in the grass. It doesn't really look nice. And so what I did was I took those bulbs out three or four bulbs at the beginning of the circuit. I wasn't really thinking about what I was doing. And um, as soon as I plugged it in, you saw the lights go all the way around the house, but the first 20 or so weren't lit up. And so I was like, well, that's kind of interesting. I wonder why that is. And so the first thing I did was I plugged those four lights back in, and bam, everything came back on. And so as I was, you know, looking around the Internet, I mean, once I thought about it, I knew what was going on, but uh, I found this great image that you can see over at the blog, pwnyourhw.blogspot.com. And so what a lot of the LEDs lights do these days is they have um, what's known as series parallel strands. So if you have like more than 50 lights, they actually have multiple series circuits. And so imagine you have, you know, everything in a line like a series circuit, but then you also have partitions like in the ladder, like I was describing, in the parallel circuit. So what you do is, that, let's say you have 100 um, lights. What they'll do is they'll take each 25 lights and make those in series, but then they'll, then they'll kind of create the rungs of the ladder and the, the legs of the ladder, like I said before, and put each of those in parallel. So if you have one failed bulb, only 25 will go out, and you won't lose your entire house, which can be very desirable, because then you don't have the whole thing, you know, <laughs> go right down the tubes if one light bulb goes out. And that also helps uh, save power but make things more reliable. And also helps us, you know, as we're budding young physics students and you know, electricians in some sense, helps you to understand the difference between series and parallel circuits. And so, um, man, LEDs are such cool technology. I I, I had a, um, a little bit of a pining. I didn't really like them until this year. I mean, I have LEDs on my house because I love how cost-effective they are, and they're so intelligent from that uh, from that perspective. They're, you know, it would, for 40 days, you, most people kind of light their Christmas tree and their house for 40 days, and the average person, when you were running the lights that they used to use with the filaments in the 90s, it cost you about 10 bucks. And now that same cost to run your your house, all the lights for 40 days, is about 27 cents. So that's how much more efficient with energy LED lights are. And I really love how bright they are. The colors are kind of weird. I, I haven't really found a, a, 
a comfort with them just from my eye because I like those kind of dulled out 90s style lights. But the whole LED technology I really like and I'm actually finally getting used to them. So that is my, uh, that is my story for uh, the Christmas episode about Christmas lights. And so, yeah, it gives you, gives you a little bit of uh, introduction to series and parallel circuits, which I'm sure that you've seen in Physics 1, if that's what you're diving into. And if you are going to be diving into it, you're going to see it for sure. That's the first thing you're going to tell you is, you know, V equals IR in series, and they'll explain, well, V equals IR all the time, but it's that direct in series, and it's a little different for parallel. And so I thought, you know, if you can visualize it in terms of Christmas lights, you know, it really helps, because I remember the first time I saw it, it was not really intuitive to me at all exactly how it worked. But now I'm, I'm relatively comfortable with it, and... Uh, so, yeah, again, you know, check out the energy.gov article. I linked it up on the blog. Uh, it'll, of course, be over on Twitter. And, uh, yeah, a little bit of a uh, holiday action for you to keep you in the zone, you know, through the holidays. So I think that's going to do it. I'm going to wrap it up, and then we'll be back uh, next week with a little more uh, vector action. So if you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. If not, I hope you're, uh, hope you're doing well. And I hope you're enjoying the holiday season wherever you are. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. But, you know, even though if, if you're in downtime, if you're on a winter break or something like that, don't let that uh, don't let that get you down. You know, don't rela- relax, of course. No one's saying don't relax, don't, re- don't rest up. But don't re- relax too much because you're going to need to uh, you're going to need to get back into it sooner than you think. So. You know, throw on the podcast. You know, keep yourself marginally in the zone. Just keep everything lubricated mentally. So with that, guys, stay frosty, stay in the zone. Merry Christmas, and I'll catch you next time, guys. Take care.